Hello everyone, my name is Jim Farmer. I'm the festival director of Out on Film, Atlanta's LGBTQ Film Festival. This is our 37th year and we have some amazing programming this year. One of our favorite short programs is always Horror Blocks, which we started about five years ago. And this year's this year's program is, is wonderful. I'm so excited to be able to share this with our audiences. And I'm very excited to be able to talk to four of our six filmmakers tonight. So how we're gonna do this, we're just gonna go around the room. I'll, I'll ask you by film name and you can go around and we'll just sort of keep this. Oh, we have one more. Okay. <clears throat> Why don't we go and get started? I'll, I'll just call you by the film name. The first question is, tell me a little bit about yourself and then tell me about your film. And we'll start from the team from Colette. All right, yes, Colette. Um, my name is Jack Walterman. I'm a Minneapolis-based filmmaker, um, and I made the short film Colette to meet other filmmakers in Minnesota, but everybody loved it so much that I decided to send it outward. So I don't know what else you would like to know, but um, about the movie or, or what? But, Just a little um, bit about the movie. Yeah, the, the movie is yeah. about um, a gay couple and their son, uh, they move into a haunted house and at first everything's all right and then they're a little bit over their heads on the situation so they bring in a medium to help figure out is the ghost a friend or a foe and then that's where the movie goes is we find out the answer um yeah great thanks so much the team from bath bomb hello uh sorry if my audio is terrible um I'm Colin G. Cooper. I'm a filmmaker based in Toronto, Canada. Um, the, the idea behind Bath Bomb is I, I was intending to make a feature that repositioned narratives from Giallo films from the 60s and 70s um, instead of just making the uh, like a typical protagonist queer as you know, people tend to do who are from marginalized populations just take the same protagonist but cast them as a member of your community. I wanted to instead reposition it to be told from the side character's perspective. We had a hard time pitching that because a lot of people don't even know what Giallo is. So okay. Giallo is even more confusing to them. So um, I, we decided to do a short and a proof of concept. Um, and that was, that was the uh, emphasis for this, this film being made. Okay, great. Thanks so much. The team from HAG. Hi, uh, my name is Jay Najee. I use she, they pronouns. Um, I am based in Washington, D.C., but I am from South Carolina, born and raised. Um, my film, HAG, is a mix of me retelling folklore from my my state. I am from the low country of South Carolina. So um Geechee through and through, um, which is a underrepresented group um when it comes to Southern ideas and Southern Gothic aesthetics in cinema. Mm -hmm. So this film is a proof of concept um that uh was actually my thesis film for um Howard University's MFA film program. Great. Let's move on to um, Oversight. Hi, I'm uh, Cam Baldwin. Um, I made uh, Oversight. Uh, I, I guess I made it because I was staying with my, my, my longtime friend out in LA and wanted to make something with him for a long time. And our other friend that was living out there and... Um, Another friend was a drone uh, operator uh, and just had this idea to make something uh, entirely shot um, from the POV of a drone. Um, and it was uh, super fun to make. And uh, I, I don't generally lean into sort of like the horror or thriller uh, side of things, but this was like a, it just sort of jumped out at me and uh, my collaborators and stuff like, a story that we could um, that we could that we could make um, with really limited resources. Okay, and let's finish up with Die Bully Die. Hi, my name's Nathan. Um, I directed Die Bully Die with my brother Nick. Um, we're two Sydney-based filmmakers, uh, but we grew up in Ireland. 
Um, so Die, Bully, Die is a comedy horror following Max, who catches up with his high school bully, Adam, 17 years after high school. Um, Adam bullied Max for being gay. Um, they meet up in a fancy restaurant where Max's grudge against Adam begins to manifest in horrific ways. Um, it's based on a, a true story um, and was, uh, yeah, written by um, Matthew Backer and Drew Weston. And it was, it's partly based on Matt's own experiences. Okay, great. Next question is, um, can you just sort of all talk about where you are right now in terms of your festival run? Again, we'll start with Jack. Um, we are currently in the kind of the first half. We've been to Seattle. We're going to be in Atlanta here with you all. Um, I'm going to be in Chicago this weekend at the Chicago Horror Film Festival. Okay. Um, and then I have a couple more screenings in Minnesota. So we're we're just starting to hear back from festivals and we'll see how the year goes. Nice. So far, so good. Nice. Colin. Um, I'm currently at Calgary International Film Festival, which is our 13th festival. Um, we started in April and had been doing kind of like three to four-ish a month. But um, it, we went to Fantasia and won an award at Fantasia. And after that, things kind of ramped up. So uh, in, in October, we have... Uh, 20 festivals in 10 different countries. <laughs> and then uh, we'll probably stop in, in November uh, okay. to start work on the, on the future version. Okay, great. Jay. Yeah, um, this, like I said, is my thesis film from grad school. So I'm fresh out of grad school. So my producer and I um, are in the midst of our festival circuit as of current. We are in 10 festivals right now. Um, hoping for, we have a couple of more waiting on notifications dates from, we got into a couple in California, a couple of in, couple in back home in South Carolina and a couple up here in DC. Um, I think the, my favorite one other than this one, this is one of the ones that we had top on the list, um, is, um, I was lucky enough through the thesis showcase to get the social innovator award with focus features. So that was super exciting for me to be able to talk about how I grew up on a scope that large. That's great. Kim. Um, this is our premiere uh, uh, next week, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, and then we're playing at tall grass a couple weeks later and then i'm not exactly sure where we're off from there great and nathan um we started our festival run in june so we we premiered at the sydney film festival over here in australia mm -hmm. and we won the award for best live action short at the festival um which was totally unexpected um this will be our u.s premiere um so we've got a few festivals coming up after in the US. So we've got out on film first, and then we head over for a screen fest in uh, Los Angeles. And then we've got a, a bunch more lined up for after that. Yeah. Congratulations on all of you. I mean, that, that's, I mean, I, I'm really honored that um, your films are here. I mean, and it, again, it, it's a really, really strong program. I cannot wait for people to watch this. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your approach because we have some films in this in this block that are sort of horror with comedic elements and then we have some other films that's just flat out horror um so just just talk to me a little bit about your approach when you're making this again we'll start with jack um i might be leaning more towards horror in our story there's a there's a couple of moments i think might be a little funny but i think that's just me as a human being you gotta highlight the the darkness with some highlights and get the shadows it's like that contrast is what i think helps elevate any story mm -hmm. uh, but yeah i think in terms of approach i wanted uh to take it very seriously so that people could lean into the you know the tropes of the genre is you know haunted house we're in dire situation um, are we going to be okay and just get everybody immediately into that space right off the first scene? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It just, the approach was let's take it seriously because I was working with 
a huge group of uh, filmmakers that I hadn't worked with before. So I needed to get everybody on the same page. And I think a, a serious approach just helps uh, when you're trying to wrangle together a new team. Colin. Um, yeah, we, I mean, the humor in ours comes from going back to Jalo again. There was a lot of like unintentional camp in, in Jalo, which is part of why it seems like it should be reclaimed by queer people. Um, so we took moments that would normally be unintentionally campy and we made them intentionally campy. And that's where the humor came from. I think it's, I don't know, it depends. The split between horror and, and comedy depends on the audience, really. Sometimes it's laughs in unexpected places. Um, but, but yeah, around 50-50, I guess. Great. Jay? Yeah, um, for me, I think I'm one of the ones who leans more towards just horror um, in my story. Um, one of the big things for me um, in building it, I wrote and directed and I've been writing the script for a long time um, and then pared it down to a short to start bringing it into the ether, you know? Um, one of the big things for me was looking at horror as catharsis. Um, a lot of times, Something I've noticed in in my studies as a filmmaker and as a creator, I started in the world of theater before I got into film, is um, horror generally is a, like, there's a need for catharsis. Like, you're scared of something, but you don't know why. And being able to experience, and experience it in a safe way um, is something that rarely you see for... Um, queer people or for black people. So I wanted to create an experience with a story I grew up with that was very near and dear to me. That's something my granny taught me when I was young um, to move that into, into the canon um, as well as the idea that a lot of Southern folklore isn't written down. It's mostly oral tradition. So to me, it's exciting to be able to retell my versions of um, folklore and urban legends I grew up with. Great. Kemp. Um, well, I think mine's one of the more, it has comedic elements. Um, I, I think it's more of like a dark comedy thriller, maybe. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's me, like the, at least the beginning is, has some comedic elements to it. And then I, I was trying to like, really like base them within the, the, the reality of the couple that's in it. And Feel like true life and we're we're getting a sort of bird's eye view we're it's sort of voyeuristic look into their life and then sort of a bait and switch a little bit where you're like oh we're just looking in on the, their lives and then you kind of the horror uh, or thriller aspect of of it sort of jumps out okay. so it was it, it was used kind of to kind of make the audience feel comfortable um watching this and then bring out the sort of the more uh, serious and uh, dramatic moments towards the end. Okay. Nathan. Yeah, I think um, myself and my brother have always gravitated towards uh, horror. And it's, it's like Jack said, like, you know, life has uh, light and shadow. So um, for us, that's, that's really important to, to show the humanity as well and, and show the humor. Our, our film is, is about um, the trauma someone's experienced as a result of bullying. So it's quite a serious topic. And it was really, really um, exciting for us when we read the script that it approached a serious topic in a comedic way and wasn't didn't feel too serious and, and um, was able to make fun of itself as well. Yeah. Um, so that was something that, uh, yeah, we, we just really gravitated towards this kind of part of our style as directors. We love comedy, we love horror, and we love combining the two. Nice. Um, can all of you speak um, on queer representation and why that's important to you? We'll start again with Jack. Yeah, uh, you know, growing up gay in the Midwest, the, the years that I was going through school, it was very much like more of a keep it in, 
keep it away. It's not really a topic of conversation that people want out and about. And so I just wanted to take a familiar story that everybody knows and just apply characters that like are usually avoided in mm -hmm. the Midwest. I mean, it's gotten a lot better even in the last like, I would say 10 years, but growing up. So when I was a big fan of horror films and as a middle schooler or a high schooler, I want to be able to give that back to like those age students to be like, hey, like there are more people in this world and there's different backgrounds and stories to be heard. So we're just starting to, I mean, even the panel here, it's really exciting to see like what's being tapped into because there's so much still to be heard. Great. Colin. Uh, yeah, in addition to just representation in general, specifically in the horror, um, I don't know if straight mainstream folks know that the origins of horror, not just cinematically, but even as a literary genre, are queer. Um, you know, horror was created by queer people initially, to a certain extent, so it's sci-fi. Um, you know, Frankenstein is the first horror novel and the first sci-fi novel and it was made by a queer woman. Um, so I think that specifically in this in genre spaces, it's important for there to be queer representation. Uh, that's where it started and drifted away from there pretty heavily. And it has some of the most offensive um, misportrayals, mostly because horror usually includes violence and, and death. And when there are queer characters historically, a lot of times they are fodder for for those elements exactly jay uh i think for me it's it's interesting uh, because i've always been a horror writer um whereas most of my my cohort for example live in the drama or experimental area and s sitting in that space for me i've realized even in this panel right now, which is exciting to have that um, community, but there's an intersectional lens that I'm excited to look into a little bit deeper and see how our lived experiences affect how, how things scare us. I think what scares us and why it scares us um, expands, is like expansive across what we see in, in, in cinema and in real life. So being able to look at that as um, a female presenting person, as a queer person, as a black person, and be able to pull all that together to tell stories that mean something to not only me, but to the people that I've grown up with or the people that I've seen around me um, is exciting to me. Um, I know I've never seen anything like I've done before. Um, so it's exciting to be able to do that and show it to people that I exist past what you may think I am. Thank you. Kim. Um, so my film, it was, I was trying to, yeah, I have the, the two actors in it are two of my best friends and they are great actors and I didn't see them getting cast enough. And I really wanted to make something special with them. Um, and uh, I had the idea of, of shooting something from the POV of a drone a long time ago. And then I was in LA for a bit and uh, this came up and it just felt like, oh, I could really sort of tap into like conversations that were we were having around like the sort of like a uh, moment in time where like rights seemingly feeling like they're like there's like a pushback on rights where we're, we're making momentum in one way and now they're sliding back and this felt like a way to like give them an opportunity to shine and to sort of tap in into some of the conversations that we were having um yeah. You yeah, great. And Nathan. Yeah, I mean, uh, a kind of eye opening moment for us was um, so we, we crowdfunded our film uh, almost entirely. And um, the something really eye opening for us was just the response that we got and people who responded to the story. And obviously, as I said, it's it's based on a true story. So that was like a huge moment in terms of 
the desire for and the audience um, that's there for stories like this and and queer stories. I mean, it's it's hugely important. And the response that we've got since making the film and screening the film um, has has just been awesome. That's great. Okay, one more quick final question. As someone who's a huge horror, f- um, I, I love horror films. I mean, I, I, I mean, I just it's it's something I've always grown up and love. Just I want to ask you quickly, what's your favorite horror film? So we start with Jack. Right now, it's The Conjuring. Okay, Colin. Uh for personal reasons that would take a really long time to explain if you're okay. nightmare in Elm Street. Okay. Jay. And I say two. Yes. Okay. Um, so Ganja and Hess directed by Bill Gunn and mm-hmm. Suspiria directed by Dario Argento. Oh, okay. That's that is definitely <laughs> the so, the poster is on my wall. Love exactly. them too bad. Oh, exactly. Kemp. I don't know. I the, the the thing I return to, and it's not really horror. Is uh, to me, it's like Midsommar. Uh, yeah. But like, you know, I love I love uh, you know like Friday Thirteenth. Um, I don't know. And Nathan. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I'm gonna have to say, as of right now, The Shining. Okay. All amazing choices. That, that's great. Okay, Horror Shorts screens Friday, October 4th at 7.15 at the Midtown Arts Cinema, followed by a brief um, virtual week as well. Uh, I am so excited to have all these films in our festival and on this program. Um, you'll get The films you'll get to see will be Colette, Stink, Bath Bomb, Hag, Oversight, and Die, Bully, Do- uh, Die, Bully, Dies are all amazing. Jack, Colin, Jay, Kemp, Nathan, thank you all so much for sharing your films with us. Thanks for doing this tonight. And I cannot wait to be at this program and hopefully meet a lot of you there. Thank you all so much. Thank you. This is great. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks.